Hello friends, welcome to the Tech Grant. Today we will do system design for uh, a messaging system and the messaging system will be something like uh, a WhatsApp messenger or a Facebook messenger or WeChat that kind of system. So let's see what are the requirements for building a system like these. The basic requirement here is that uh, the users, if there are two users, they should be able to send message to each other. So our system should support one to one messaging. Our system should support a feature like if you have used WhatsApp or even Facebook Messenger, you know that uh, every time you send a message, you get a notification that your message has been sent, it has been delivered, and when the user, suppose user 1 send a message to user 2 and user 2 sees that message, so you get a double tick mark with blue in case of WhatsApp, which means that the user 2 has seen your message. So we'll try to incorporate that feature as part of our system design. Uh, we'll also try to incorporate a feature where we will tell user one that which all of their friends are online and when they were last online. So if user one has like 100 of friends, so when he scrolls down his list of friends, he can see when one of his friends was last online. The next thing is that we should be able to support media message. Media message means that uh, we should be able to send pictures, we should be able to send audio and video clips. And last thing is persistence of the chat. So this is like uh, uh, a non-trivial kind of thing in, uh, in, in a messaging system. So some of the messaging system it supports persistence of chat, some does not. This system design that I'm going to talk about will not support persistence chat, but I will just go through the steps that you can incorporate in this system design if you want to make the chat persistent. So if you see WhatsApp, it does not persist your chat. Once you have seen your chat and once you delete your chat, then that chat is gone forever. You will not be able to recover that chat anytime. And uh, but they give you a feature like if you want to recover or you want to persist your chat, then you can store it on a Google Drive. So next time when you install WhatsApp in some other device and you want your old chats, then you can pull it from the Google Drive. But we will not incorporate all those things in as part of the system design. So that that will be the major focus. So first four points will be the major focus for this system design. Now for non-functional requirement. The chat should be having a real time experience because uh, it's like one to one or even in a case of group chat, we should have a real time experience where user one send a message and user two, two, user two should be able to receive that message immediately. And when he replies, then user one should be able to get the uh, reply immediately. The consistency is of course an uh, important factor here because you can install your application in multiple uh, devices you can install it on a laptop or uh, you can basically configure it as part of your web browser or in you can have the application in one of the android mobile in apple mobile all those things so whatever message you get it should be consistent across the device the system should definitely be scalable because as and when you roll out your application in different countries you can expect a lot of traffic when you come to and especially when you roll out your application to a country like India or China where the population is very high so you should definitely have the scalability factor in your mind when you design a system like these and availability of course your application any application that you design should be always available otherwise uh, no one will use it so it's as simple as that so let's jump into the uh, the system and how we'll design so we'll start from one to one messaging and I will show you from the very basic that uh, how we can think about uh, developing all these things or uh, developing a system like these so for one to one chat the requirement is very simple user one is there user two is there and user one should be able to send a message to user two now this you this these two guys can communicate with each other very easily if they are in a same room but in technical world the same room means that they are on the same network so if these two guys are on the same network so user 1 will know that what is the address of user 2 and user 2 will know what is the address of user 1 and he can send his message to his address by address I mean the IP address and the port of the users but the problem here is uh, that uh, 
this will not be the case in uh, in in a normal world because these two guys will always be connected through internet they will not be connected through a lan because if your messaging system is restricted to lan it is not much of a use frankly speaking so uh, we have to think that uh, these guys will be connected via internet and if they are connected via internet there has it it has its own challenge next thing is that uh, this guy will not only talk to user 2 it can talk to other user also so let us see that uh, what will happen when they are connected through an internet now if these two guys are connected via internet this guy does not know what is the address of this guy and this guy does not know what is the address of this guy so if this guy sends some message where will this how this guy will receive that particular message so we can solve this problem by putting one application which will be a common application that we can provide as part of our system on internet so let us say that we put a server we put an application server and we force these two user to send the message to our server so if we force these two guys to send the message to our server then the benefit that we have here is that once these two guys connect to our server then we know the address of user 1 and this server will know the address of user 2 so when this guy sends a message to our server our server can basically say that okay uh, i have got a message from user 1 and he wants to send the message to user 2 i have a connection of user 2 also so i will send the message back to user 2 so this will give a uh, benefit over one to one communication now even if there are multiple users here so each of those user will also connect to this application server so anytime one user sends the message to the other this chat server can basically know the address of all the users that are there in picture so how these guys will send the request and how these guys will receive the request so the request can be sent in a simple http format so this guy will send the request that uh, with with a body saying that okay i have uh, a message say hi and he wants to send it to user 2 so chat server will know that i have to send the message to user 2 so if suppose this guy sends a message and uh, chat server then sends the message back to this user but you see a challenge here the http request it works only from client to the server it does not work from server to client so here we are restricted now if chat server has to send a message to the user how he can send the message because http will not work http will work only from the pro protocol works only from client to server it does not work from server to client messaging uh, it works but there are some other ways to uh, send the message from server to client and we'll deal with that so we have basically two mechanism there are two mechanism in which the chat server can talk back to the user so those two are like push and pull so chat server can basically push a message back to the user so if this guy has sent some message to chat server and chat server wants to send it to the user so he can basically push that message to user 2 or user 2 can connect to chat server and see if there is some pending message for him and he can pull the message back now this push and pull you need to basically weigh these two how uh, how efficiently these two will work so there are basically two protocols that can work or two method in which these push and pull can be implemented and these two are long polling and web socket so long polling is uh, again uh, http request so in long polling what will happen is this guy will uh, user 1 will send a request to you uh, to the chat server user 1 will make a request to the chat server to see if there is any unread message for this guy now if there is no unread message he will me still keep on making the connection the connection will still be alive for certain duration and this guy will wait and he will wait for a message to arrive and as soon as the message arrives that he will capture that message and he will come back as part of that response so the response of that http will be the message that was sent from the chat server it was not sent from the chat server basically it was populated somewhere in the chat server and this guy pulled it from there 
so this is a pull mechanism but the challenge here is that this guy has to make a connection keep the connection open for certain time then time out that connection and when it times out then again this guy has to make a connection and wait there so this is a costly operation and making a connection every time is not a good design especially when you have a large scalable system so the better solution here is that you go for web socket so WebSocket is a duplex communication and it, it still works over TCP connection and like HTTP. But the benefit of WebSocket is that uh, it can basically be a two-way communication where a user or a client can talk to the server and server can also talk to the client. So the messaging can happen either ways. So this guy can send a message to chat server, the chat server can send back a message to the user. So that way we will establish the connection once and we will forget about the resource or the cost that will be involved in making the connection. As long as user one is online, this guy will keep on, uh, this guy will keep a connection with the chat server and uh, the communication can go on. So we can have something like this. So user one has made a connection with uh, that server and uh, it is over WebSocket. Now this is a bi-directional. So this guy will send the message to chat server and it can receive the message from chat server. So now what can happen is now user one, when he sends a message, he will send it to the chat server saying that I want to send a message to user two. So chat server will say that, okay, I have a connection with user two also, and that is a WebSocket connection again. So he will push that message to user two. Now, next thing is that what happens when there are multiple users. So if user one has like hundred of friend, so he wants to send a message to user two also. He wants to send, suppose this is user three, four, five. So he wants to send a message to all these guys. So how do we handle this situation? Because now, WebSocket connections for each of these users will be individual WebSocket connection with our server. So uh, the server has to know which user is connected to which WebSocket. So the solution for this is that uh, uh, web the web server or our application that is running here, it can have a, a map or maybe a, an implementation of hash table which can store user ID and it can store the connection. It's this uh, hash table will store the connection object. It is not any string or anything else, but it is the actual connection object that this guy has made with one of the user. So this application server will make, uh, uh, will store this, uh, this uh, mapping where it will have a user to connection mapping. So if I have to know oh, uh, if this guy, if user one sends a message to, for user three, so it will send it to the application server here, the chat server and chat server knows that user three is connected using this connection uh, W2. So this guy will immediately pick up this connection and transfer the message from user one to user three. So if there was a connection like that, he can send the message across. Now I know there is a question in your mind that since this is a scalable server, there will not be only one uh, one chat server. There will be multiple chat server, and how this will this scenario will work, where we have to switch the connection from user one to user three and pick up all this connection. So just park that question for a while. We will scale this system up, and we will discuss about that requirement. But at the moment, we are able to achieve one-to-one -one communication, where user one is able to send a message to a server. Server then checks that where the user two connection is and based on the user two connection, this guy is able to send the message back to user two. So this completes our first requirement where we are sending a message for where we are sending one to one message. Now the second requirement was that user one should be able to see that his message has been sent. If, he, if user one is sending a message to user two, he should be able to see a status that his message has been sent, his message has been delivered and his message has been seen by user two. So we can still, uh, with this set kind of setup, we can still make uh, that requirement possible. So this chat server will have a bunch of APIs and that API will be like send notification, send delivery report, and uh, also send message. So all those uh, endpoints will be running as part of our application. So as soon as user one sends a message to chat server, chat server will send an acknowledgement back to user one saying that uh, I have received your message. So it means that your message has been sent. 
now even after this user one goes offline it does not matter because chat server has received his message and he will deliver that message to user two so that at that particular point if we talk in terms of whatsapp this guy will get a single tick mark saying that your message has been sent now next to when this guy when the chat server it looks up for the connection here in the hash table or in the map in the map that it has created so this guy will send the message in in a json format which will have multiple tags and one of the tag will be to and from and what is the message and other things so we will discuss about all those things also in the coming slides but for now just understand that there will be a tag which will tell that uh, which message uh, has to be sent to which user so this chat server will uh, read that message and it will see that okay i have to send the message to user 2 so from here it will get the connection for the user 2 now as soon as he gets the connection for the user 2 chat server will send another notification to user 1 saying that uh, uh, that okay i have got the connection so your message is delivered now uh, what if the user 1 has gone offline by that particular time when this guy is sending a message back to it so i will say you park that question as well we will discuss about that but for now just keep in mind one word it's called push notification we'll discuss about it in detail now so uh, when this guy has got the connection of user 2 it will send a delivery message to user 1 saying that i have delivered your message and in whatsapp term you will get two tick marks there so that way you have covered two things and since this guy the chat server has the connection of user 2 it will be able to send the message using this web socket to user 2 now when user 2 opens up the message so user 2 will have an application running on the client side and uh, so we have multiple application one will be on the client side one will be running on the server side so when the client application opens up the message that time the client application will send a, a notification to the chat server saying that the message that came from user 1 has been read by me so as soon as this guy receives that message it will see that okay it was coming from user 1 there is a connection for user 1 i will send it back to user 1 so this guy sends the uh, message back to user 1 with uh, uh, with the websocket connection whatever it has established saying that your message has been read by user 2 and at that particular point we will have that blue tick mark so this way we have achieved our second requirement where we have uh, uh, incorporated the feature of one to one chat and also the feature of read delivered and seen kind of request now next thing comes uh, that uh, when the user was last online so before jumping into that let us try to scale this application and then we will cover the rest of the feature so when we scale this application we will have multiple chat servers that are running and we will have other features also so if we scale our application now we will have like a cluster of chat servers which are which are our application server running across multiple data center these can be running in different continents as well so now the challenge will be that to user one when he makes a connection he will make a connection to one of the chat server when user makes a connection he will not be he might not make the connection to the same chat server he will make the connection to some other chat server so how this communication will take place so suppose the same requirement user want, one wants to send a message to user two so how this communication will take place now for overcoming this uh, this scenario where we have multiple chat server and multiple user can connect to a different chat server we have put a cache here a redis cache which is a distributed cache uh, in case you want to check out how you can do a system design for redis i have done it as part of one of the system design video the card is there on this top here and the link is also there in the description so you can check that out how you can create your own distributed cache like redis uh, but for now we'll use redis here and uh, what we'll store in redis is something like this so in redis we will store user id the server and something like last updated so what this means is that whenever user one makes a connection to a server i will go ahead and i will update or i will insert a row in my cache saying that user one is connected to server one 
and this guy will once it has connected to server one this guy will be heart beating with the server so this user one will send a heartbeat so this client side it will keep on sending some heartbeat to the server one that way server one will know that when user one was last online so as and when we receive the heartbeat we will update this column we will go to the user one and we will update this column now the benefit of this is not only uh, achieving the feature of uh, last online but also uh, it can happen that because of some reason uh, this websocket to connection got broken or maybe this user went offline or even this server went offline so if this server goes offline then this user has to make another websocket connection so this guy will go and it can make connection to uh, server s2 so when it makes a connection to server s2 what we will do is we will go to user 1 in this table we will delete this row and we will insert another row where we say that user 1 is connected to server 2 and the last update time is whatever time he got connected so that way we will always know that to, to which server user 1 is connected to and uh, next thing is that uh, how this guy will communicate now so this user 1 now when it he sends a message to the uh, user 2 so this guy will send a message something like uh, i want to send a message to user 2 and the message is hi so this thing will be sent via the web socket to server 1 when server 1 receives the message it will see that this message is meant for user 2 now what this server will do is it will do a lookup in this table itself and it will try to find out on which server user 2 is connected to so the this application uh, i mean this will have multiple apis running which will do all these work for us in the background and that api will do a lookup and it will see that okay the user 2 is connected to server 2 or in this case server 4 so user 2 is connected to server 4 here so rather than server 1 making a new websocket connection with user 2 it will just transfer that request to server 4 saying that hey your guy is connected to uh, this guy is connected this guy has an open connection with you and i have a guy who wants to send a message to your guy so just to transfer this message to your guy so this guy will transfer that message to the application server here and this application server will now send the message back to the user too so that is how the communication will take place now uh, how we will have the knowledge about the websocket connection so that is still the same concept that we uh, had initially so each of these server will have the implementation of a hash table where these guys will store the connection so in this scenario s1 will have a similar kind of table which will tell that user1 and what is the connection object for user1 suppose this connection was broken and user1 got connected to s2 so this guy will update his table s2 will update a table and one row will be inserted saying that user1 is connected using a new connection object so that will be updated here so that is how this consistency will be maintained and the user 1 can keep on talking to the user 2 and this is how we will be able to achieve and since we have the heartbeat message every time uh, this guy sends a heartbeat message to the server and it gets updated into redis so we will always have the on uh, the list of online users or the last seen feature that we want to incorporate so if user one, one wants to see what all uh, when his friends were last online he can simply query this table and pick up this last updated from there that way you can tell that this guy was online like five minutes back one hour back or a, a day back so that can be incorporated from here now the next part is the media message so if suppose user one uh, before going into media message let me just uh, tell you in brief how this guy will send so if this guy is sending a message as, as part of json so the json can have a tags like these so he can send a two tag which means that the user to which he wants to send the message to and from tag which tells that it is coming from user one it can also have a tag type called single or chat type sorry uh, chat type called single now why i want this is that because in future i want to incorporate a, fe a feature of group chat as well so if that is the case so i need a tag for it so i will just put a chat type tag which means single here which means that it is one to one communication if it was a group then it means that it is a group chat and i need to do some other feature because 
this guy will have some endpoints which will be which will be invoked based on these tags that i have given so if this guy reads that it is a single message it will just transfer the message to one of the user if it reads that it is a group message then it has to find that for that group uh, to which group this guy wants to send the message to and what all users are there under that group and this guy has to send the message to each of the users that are present under that group but for now let us keep it simple so it it is of type single it means one to one chat then there will be a message type so this message type means that what kind of message you are sending whether it is a text message whether it is a media message so in media message also you can basically put that it is an audio video or a picture or uh, or an image and then the actual message now in case of a text message you can put the message here as part of the tag itself and this message will be delivered what happens when you are sending a media message so when you have to send a media message so in that particular case you need a storage also here where you will store the media because you cannot send the media message directly to use from user 1 to user 2 over the network that will have a lot of latency and a lot of ios will be there so the best way to do this will be when user sends the media message you just store it in a storage you get the link of that message the url where the message has been stored and pass on that url to user 2 so when you pass on the url you can also send a small thumbnail of the message or the media message that is there to user 2 now if user 2 wants to see the image or he wants to listen to the audio or check out the video then he can basically press the download button and once he play uh, press, press the download button it means that he wants to access that link he is actually clicking on the link so when he clicks that link that same message can be downloaded from the storage for user 2 now the question comes that how the media message can be sent across uh, this websocket connection that we have so websocket client uh, it can basically accept the media message it can uh, it has to be encoded so the application that we have on the client side it will basically encode the message into base64 uh, format and it can transfer it to our application server and our application server will basically decode it and store it in the storage so that is how the media message can be transferred back and forth as part of all this chain so i hope the communication is clear till now and till now i have covered the uh, major requirement that we were talking about so we have covered how we will do one-to-one -one messaging how we'll scale up the system for one-to-one -one messaging how we will show the scene delivered and sent kind of status how we will see whether the user was when the user was last online and also we have discussed about the media messages that how the media message can be transferred now next thing is in case you want to put to, or you want to make your chat persistent so in this system design that you have here in this whole system there is no way you can persist your db because uh, persist your message because i'm not storing message anywhere if you see i'm just uh, changing I, i'm transferring the message from one place to the another only thing that i'm storing is the media message because uh, I have to store it because I don't want uh, latency as part of my network because uh, it will take a lot of storage, uh, it will take a lot of IOs and it will slow down the system for other user also. So I am storing it here. I may, uh, once this guy sees that message or receives that message, I can delete it from my storage also. But in case you want to persist your message, then what you have to do is you have to put a database on top of this, uh, uh, this system. So you can create something like uh, a db here there will be a db which will be here and uh, rather than talking to uh, uh, means uh, once you have you are talking to redis the redis can basically store the message back to the db or even the server can directly connect to the database for storing the chat so these can be asynchronous process so each of these will make a connection to database and store all these chats there and uh, what kind of database that you can use here is um, since uh, the chat message will be for each user there will be frequent inserts uh, so 
ideally you can go with any column in our database that that can uh, that will be helpful i guess so you can go with cassandra kind of db now when you are persisting the data in your database there are few things that you can keep in mind uh, like the user table that you create so user table should have uh, the from user to user and uh, some key can be there and a chat id so this why this is required is that uh, because when user 1 talks to user 2 it can always uh, refer back to this chat id and in the chat id table you can store the message so for each of these chat id you can have multiple message for sequencing your timestamp because user 1 will send a message to user 2 at a particular timestamp then user 2 replies so the timestamp will be different so you have to sequence that message when you show it on the uh, uh, on the client side so that is why it's required i have added a key here the reason being uh, uh, reason behind this is that if you see whatsapp uh, whatsapp chats or even the calls that are there on whatsapp they are encrypted and uh, will not go into details of encryption for now but uh, you can if you want to achieve that you can just add a key here this key will be stored on the server side also for decoding your message so you will encode using this key and the server will have the a public key which will decode the message for you so uh, you, we will discuss about this in a separate video where we will talk about security but for now just to give a brief that this can also be achieved in our system using this kind of scenario now we can also have a table for groups like i was discussing previously here when if you have a chat type as group so you can refer back to this table and uh, this table will tell that okay for this group id you need to you need to add a group id here tag also that this is a group chat and to which group id i need to send the message to so you can do a lookup from this table and say that okay as part of this group id these are the users and out of this users this user has sent the message so remaining are all these user I, and i want to send the message to all these users so that is how you can achieve the group chatting functionality now finally the question comes which i parked when when i was talking about uh, the receiver or even the notification sending back to user one what happens when receiver of the message is offline so for that your phone uh, now most of the phone it provides a feature called push notification i will not discuss about the push notification in detail because it is a very big topic in itself uh, but i found a very nice article and i will put the description uh, put that link in my description uh, it is there as part of the google page where it says that how the push notification works so it says that uh, basically you need to do a setup on your side where your client application or my application which is on the client side it should register the user with the push notification or the push messaging system and whenever the other system uh, whenever my server sends some message and it sees that uh, the user is offline it can basically put it back into the notification server and when this user comes online it can pull the message from all those uh, from that notification server so uh, i will put it in the description you can have a read about it the other way or the naive way of doing is uh, you can use a database and in the database you can store user 1 user 2 and timestamp like this and when user 1 comes online it can refer back to this table and see what all are the uh, from which all user at what all timestamp do i have an unread message and it can go back to the chat message chat table and it can pick up all those messages from there it can show it to user one first and then the websocket connection and all will be similar but this will be a very naive way the better way uh, or how most of the system works these days even your mailing system like gmail or whatever mail you use it works on push notification so this will be definitely a better way so overall this is how i will try to design a chat messaging for me uh, i hope the concepts were pretty clear to you if it is not you can go back in the video and check out the concepts again if still you have some doubt you can put it in the comment section i will definitely answer all those questions and if this video was helpful to you do not forget to hit that like button so like the video and subscribe to the channel that's it for this video see you in the next one take care bye